You know how when you're waiting for gold to buy an item, you stand at the edge of the fountain, buy it, and then walk off? Yeah, that's trash. The problem is that while you're in between buying the item and then closing the shop, your champion isn't moving. So instead, you should stand further back in the fountain and input a movement command before you have enough gold. This way, your passive income lines up for exactly when your champion is leaving the fountain. By doing so, you're not standing still a single moment, and this saves you about maybe 0.1 seconds worth of time. Great, so that's the most useless thing many of you have probably ever heard, and I'm sure you're all wondering what kind of garbage you're watching right now. But there is something I find genuinely amusing about this worthless shopping technique. There is no guide about it, no coach would ever point it out to you, it's just never talked about in general, and yet. Every single good player in the world not only knows about this technique, but they also care enough to do it consistently despite how useless it is. Why? That is precisely what I'll be breaking down in this video. I'm going to go over one of the major differences between high and low elo players that no one teaches you that is a significant reason for why you may not be climbing as fast as you'd like. Okay, so when watching League of Legends educational videos to get better, many of you know how some topics are repeated like crazy. Every guide is about macro, wave control, trading, champion mechanics, etc. There's a boring but very good reason for it. These topics are the fundamentals, and they have a lot of value. They're good for every role, every champion, all elos, they're useful every single game, so they're just by default the most valuable thing you can teach someone. So when deciding what I could make, I could talk about slow pushing or how on graves at very specific damage thresholds that if you're doing the red buff while the blast cone next to it is up and you're immediately pathing the top or rift herald afterwards that you should drag the red buff and then finish it off with a final auto attack on the blast cone allowing your pellets to finish it off saving you a single auto attack worth of time then yeah i'm gonna make the video about slow pushing which is a shame because i think time efficiency tips like that one and the shopping technique are one of the biggest difference makers between high and low elo players in fact i may sound crazy here but i think it deserves to be on that same level as those previous fundamental concepts we talked about and now i'm gonna try to convince you of that by the way that little course card right there has caused me some great distress my editor thought it'd be a nice way to visualize what I'm saying. That makes sense, right? This guide has been live on the site for a few weeks, and in that time, I have been bombarded with people asking, Hey, where's the course? Definitely gonna make a course for this, right? It shows it's right there. Where is it? I can't wait to see it. It got so bad, my boss was like, Yeah, you kind of have to make one, so get to it. It was really fun having to make a nine-episode course as efficiently as possible. <laughs> anyway, it's a real thing now and you can watch it right there. Let's get back to business. Okay, so League of Legends at its core is a game about decision making based on the time that you have. So you constantly have to weigh the value of all the options that you have on the map at any given time. There's a big wave in top lane that you could catch, but mid lane has no flash, so maybe you could gank them. Dragons also up, or something simple like the enemy raptors could be contested. You have to weigh the value of all of these options as well as how long it takes you to actually get there and execute on them as well. Okay, a bat could see where I'm going with this. Being efficient and saving time can help you both in individual moments of a game as well as adding up over the course of an entire game. Let's start with the individual moments. Being one or two seconds faster for everything you do in the game can be the difference maker between you being able to see a play as well as a major reason for it either going right or wrong. Let's look at some examples. Okay, for this following clip, I'm really gonna overanalyze it. You don't have to play Jax or even understand what's happening. I just want you to appreciate the level of detail that's going on and just take it in. Here we have pro player Blippa about to push this wave. Let's see how he optimizes doing so. Fi tries to contest him, so he autos her once. Then he autos a minion twice, and on the third hit, proxes R's passive auto. Now he's going to change to this minion. This is because Jax has a very specific breakpoint when it comes to killing melee minions. With Trinity Forced, he can do one regular auto and then one W auto to instantly kill a melee minion. However, it didn't kill it. If you notice his game score and CS, he's not doing too well. So he's not level 9 yet, and he's missing a longsword or two where 
worth of damage. It's pretty rare to not hit this breakpoint as Jack, so I imagine this caught him off guard and he panicked a bit. So he used his third auto attack to finish this minion, which is definitely a small mistake because this melee wouldn't have taken aggro, so he could have used his passive auto on another minion. In any case, after that he autos this minion twice and has an issue to deal with. His third passive auto would kill this melee minion he's hitting, but thinking ahead, this other melee is at a weird health pool where a regular auto attack might not kill it. It's kind of hard to tell in the moment. Okay, so because this one has most of the creep aggro, he swaps his passive auto to the other melee to finish it off. While doing so, this one took enough damage from minions, allowing him to finish it off with a regular auto attack. This was a nice and safe way to guarantee he doesn't miss either CS without wasting any time. Immediately after, he Ws the cannon the second it's up to make use of his Trinity Force proc. Important to note that on Jax at this point in the game, two regular auto attacks would not kill caster minions. However, a regular auto plus a passive auto will kill them. So he passive autos into auto, then auto, passive auto, then auto, swap back to the cannon to proc Trinity again, then passive auto to wrap things up. Okay, I hope you can all appreciate the level of detail that went into killing that single minion wave, and keep in mind he did that in real time. But what comes right afterwards is the actual learning lesson here. Weppo decides to dive the enemy Vi and trade one for one with her. We could talk about so many things here. Why is he diving here? Is this worth? Also, the Vi just sucks and messed up by queuing into lane. None of that matters. What matters is that you could have the same macro knowledge and champion mechanics as Whippo, but if you don't know how to optimize your pushing, you would have pushed the wave two or three seconds slower and it would have been here when Vi queued over. This is my main point. You wouldn't have even seen the play available to you. Most of you don't even know what you're missing every single game. Now that was a play where it's easy to see the missed opportunity of being slow. Another example of that would be a jungler being slightly too late to counter gank. Those are just obvious opportunities missed by being late. But why this skill isn't super emphasized in my opinion is because sometimes it's hard to see the indirect consequences of being slow. Here's an example. This Blitzcrank walks through the mid lane wave and paths to the recalling Caitlyn and barely misses a hook on her, all because he didn't optimize his mobility boots here. What he had to do was step slightly back into the left and let Draven walk up to tank the wave. This way, his mobies don't get proc. Then he can run faster towards Caitlyn and potentially score a hook on her, or at the very least cancel her recall. Let's just imagine he cancelled her recall. Moments later, when both teams are contesting Dragon Vision, Caitlyn wouldn't have been here yet, so the red team would have had to concede control over the area. Then in the ensuing fight, the blue team would have been the ones with the vision advantage. Instead, they end up getting forced off the Dragon Soul, making the game infinitely harder. And this all goes back to Blitzcrank not optimizing using his mobies. And this is the problem. It's really hard to see a series of consequences of being slightly too slow at something. For example, how many times have you guys passed towards a wave and barely not gotten that cannon minion last hit? And then how many times have you guys based and you're 60 gold off an important item? Then you're down an item, you lose a fight, okay you get it. You never know when saving one or two seconds could have a butterfly effect on the entire outcome of a game. This is a massive deal. Whenever I watch players platinum and below, I feel like I'm watching everyone play in slow motion. This misfortune is making so many minor mistakes, which are individually not that big of a deal, but when you put them all together, it adds up to so much time being lost. At the end of this push, if it was me here, I would have gotten a turret plate but she's just down 170 gold even though she's not doing anything technically wrong. And the worst part is that it isn't just individual moments. This can add up a ton over the course of a game. Let's say that you being efficient a single time gets you an extra kill, a minion wave, or even just a turret plate like we just mentioned. This means that your character is now stronger. When you're stronger in League, you have more options because of what you're now capable of doing. This means that your time now has more value, which then means that the time you're saving is even more valuable, which then means Means, okay, you get the point. This is why when challenger players smurf in low elos, every game is a complete blowout regardless of their own team's skill level. Yes, they have macro and mechanics, but at the same time, every low elo player plays so slowly and take forever to both make decisions and then execute on them that this means that the challenger player, by comparison, is going from point A to point B to C to D, picking up every wave, kill, jungle camp, etc. You ever notice how when people smurf, they're just 10 CS per minute with 80% kill participation every single game? Yeah, this would be the reason. By the way, as a quick side note, this is why the best role to elo boost or smurf on has always been jungle. It's the most notorious role for it, right? And that's not because it's the cerebral role where you can take advantage of 
all your intelligent pathing. Yeah, nice joke, jungle mains. It's because challenger junglers are optimizing literally every single auto attack in their clears and are moving across the map at crazy efficiency. Meanwhile, your average gold elo jungler, I swear, is just listening to nature healing music, just vibing while they kill the camps in the slowest way possible. The gold jungler could make every correct macro decision and the game would still be one-sided because of how far behind they are. Look, it's just not possible to compete versus no-life players who know every little trick to save time. Remember how this guide led to me making an entire 9 episode efficiency course? Well, here's another advanced and super niche tip from the course that I actually learned while making it. If you're gonna buy a mana item, you should buy it instantly when you base. Doing so will let you get full mana faster. Here's an example of an Oom Mage basing. On the left, they buy Lost Chapter instantly, and on the right, they waited about 5 seconds to buy it. You can see that the left got full mana slightly faster. How is a gold player possibly supposed to compete versus someone who not only knows, but cares enough to do that every game? Learning a bunch of tips like that takes forever to notice, so I just put every other one I could think of into the course. They're all tips that save you like 1 or 2 seconds at most per game, but all the good players still do them whenever possible. But I also made sure to include the boring fundamental stuff that will actually help you be way more efficient, saving you tons of seconds multiple times per game that actually matter, such as... Let's say I want to farm this bot lane wave and then immediately path to mid. If I wasn't thinking ahead, I might kill the wave like so, leaving me in the center of the lane. But if I've already prepared myself to rotate towards mid, then I'll be killing the wave standing here, letting myself rotate much faster. If you do want to get the full course for all the fundamental and advanced tips, then please use my discount link in the description since it helps both of us out. And also remember, if you don't climb at least 5 divisions when actively using skill cap, then you can just claim a full refund, so there's literally no risk. And now we can finally wrap back to why every single professional and high elo player knows our introductory shopping technique. These players have played thousands upon thousands of games and over the course of their careers experienced a ton of times where they lost a match over the most minuscule of reasons. Eventually, every single one of them realized that every second of the game is super important and if you don't optimize your time, you never know when you're going to lose because of being one second late to a play. All of them watch each other's streams and when they see someone do something like that, they immediately think to themselves, wow, that's so smart, I need to do that. And it's not because this one tip will change anything. Individually, all of this is completely worthless. But when you know hundreds and hundreds of small ways to optimize your time, it adds up and becomes really meaningful every single game, and especially will help your win rate over the course of a solo queue season. I'm the exact same way. When I watch other content creators, I'm always vigilant for these types of tips. For example, I was watching Nemesis do this the other day and I genuinely thought it was one of the coolest things I've seen in League all year. Here, I'll explain it. So Riot, to avoid refillable pot heal min-maxing, mostly due to time warp tonic I think, made it so that there's two different areas of the fountain. One where you can't use your potion, and in the other section you can use it but it will not refill the full charges. I don't know if he figured this out himself, but he's a genius. You can just heal with your pot on the outer edge of the fountain, then when you're about to leave, you sell it and undo which will get you your full charges back. And that's just as, if not more worthless than the previous shopping trick, but you better be damn sure I'm copying it and doing it every time I can now. That's just how challenger players think. Now to reel it back a bit, I've been going off on some ridiculous time saving tips here, not so you guys feel pressured that you have to do this to climb, but more so that you understand the insanity good players will go to because the concept is that important. They go to such ridiculous lengths because you can't be the best player in the world unless you're insanely obsessive about every single detail. But at Skillcap, my job is to get you to Diamond or Masters, and this isn't what I expect from you. But before we get into my final point, I want to share a little side story about this video. I know these videos just show up for you guys, but obviously I had to go through the process of actually making it. This means coming up with the idea, thinking about what I'll talk about, and then actually finding the clips and writing the script. Crazy, I know. I knew that everyone in High Elo does the shopping trick, but I had to actually go find them do it. So I told myself I'll find three really good players doing it and also Tyler won for a humorous contrast. You guys don't have to tell me how funny I am, I'm well aware. 
Anyway, Showmaker and Chovy I found in 5 minutes each. In fact, I really want to highlight what Chovy did here. At this moment, he realizes, oh, I can sell this refillable for an amp tome. So he clicks back, opens the shop, sells refillable, inputs a movement command, buys the tome, and manages to turn me on a little at the same time. What a beast. <laughs> Moving on to Tyler 1, I was prepared for the clip to take me an hour to find, but he did it within 10 minutes of me searching. The goat of NA for a reason, I guess. But then we get to Faker. It took me an hour and a half to find him doing it. I was going crazy going through his VODs and keep in mind I was going at like four times speed skipping sections and it still took that long. Anyway, I finally found it. Yay. I wish that's where it ended though. So at a later day, I go to write the script, I click on the video, and his orc has deleted his VOD off YouTube and I have never wanted to- <laughs> It took me another hour to find him doing it again, but then I found like two at the exact same time of each other, which I just feel like I was getting trolled. Anyway, I hope you guys understand why I had to share that. Back to my final point now. Like I said, these players are going to incredible lengths to save minuscule amounts of time. To climb and league yourself, you don't have to do that. What I'm asking you guys to do is to try and optimize things that would save you two, three, or four seconds. Stuff that actually makes a difference and will have meaningful impact in your games. Every time you interact with a minion wave or a jungle camp, just try to see and think about if you could have killed it faster in some way. Since you're interacting with waves almost the entire game, this is a big one to care about or other things like recalling. You guys ever watch a high low player take a really greedy recall and you just think to yourself, why would you risk dying to save two seconds? Yeah, this is why. So I want you to take some greedy recalls yourself and learn to see what you can get away with. Again, you recall constantly every game, so this is a big one as well. And then there's other small things you can look out for, like teleporting while waiting for an item. You can channel your teleport 8 gold before you've got your item, because you'll earn it through passive income while channeling your TP. Stuff like this actually saves you some seconds of time and will eventually make meaningful changes to your win rate. It's not going to be instant. You're not going to just start doing this and then go 80% win rate. It'll be a gradual thing as you slowly pick up more and more good time saving tips, but I promise they will add up if you care about it and do it consistently. Anyway, that's all I got for this one. See ya.